A few real gracious heaven-taught souls, how preferable a thousand times is their friendship to all the canting, whining, brother this and sister that of empty professors. When a man begins to doubt and fear and question for himself, he will find similar exercises respecting others, and universal charity will wither away from the root. You and I, my friend, cannot say that sin has no dominion over us. Alas, alas, we feel its power daily and hourly, and we sigh and groan at times to be delivered from the giant strength of those corruptions which seem to carry us away captive at their will. Though sin is a sweet morsel to our carnal mind, it grieves our soul, cuts up our evidences, removes our landmarks, and often seems to make our salvation impossible. Oh, what snares and temptations does the cunning devil lay for our feet, and seldom do we see the snare before we feel the smart. And a preacher, too, oh, I think if I were seen in my right colors, and if that window of which the Wesleyans talk, were placed in my bosom, what filth and vileness would be seen. I am sure I must be a monument of grace and mercy if saved from the guilt, curse, and power of sin. Few know what sin is. Who would think one spark of fire on which your little boy could tread and extinguish could burn down your ricks, barns, houses, and everything whither it could reach, or on which it could feed? Such is sin. Behold how great a manner a little fire kindleth. We feel we have no strength against sin, and we are sure that the blood of Christ alone can cleanse from sin's guilt and filth, and His grace alone from His power and dominion.